Hi guys! A little later today, it's supposed to be a nice sunny day here in Denmark. The weather is supposed to be perfect for applying yet more fairing compound to the deck hull joint. A few weeks ago, I glassed over the deck hull joint with three layers of 600 gram BX. Since then, I've been applying fairing compound whenever the weather allows it. Doing this type of work outdoors is a little bit risky because if the fairing compound gets wet before it's fully cured, then bad things will happen and you'll be left with a giant mess to clean up. Sure, I could have built some kind of structure over Athena, but that would have been very time consuming and costly. So instead I've opted just to work on the deck hull joint whenever the weather allows it. And then when it's raining, well, then I can work on other projects. Other projects like these cabinet doors and drawer fronts I finished yesterday, but uh, we'll get back to these a little later in the video. For now, it's on to some glorious sanding. The port side over here is a little bit further along than the starboard side. I ran out of fairing compound last week, so there is an additional layer over here that I have yet to apply on the starboard side. I am hoping I only need to apply one more layer to the port side and then perhaps maybe if I'm lucky it'll be done. These are going to be my tools for today. I've got this electric version of a longboard, a pretty short longboard here, and a Dura block. The term oodles of fun springs to mind. That was about three or four hours worth of sanding. The good news is I'm pretty sure the port side is ready. It's not 110% perfect, but I think this is good enough for me. There are still a few places over here that needs just a lick more of fairing compound, like for instance right here, but the majority of the work is done. The next step is to round over this very, very sharp edge here, but I'm going to hold off on doing that until the starboard side is ready too. After a few hours of fairing fun, this is what I'm left with. You might be able to see a little bit of waviness in this surface here, but that's okay. All I'm worried about today is the angle here. The waviness, that we'll take care of tomorrow. I've checked the weather forecast for tomorrow and it looks very promising, so I should be able to sand and fare again tomorrow. It's starting to look like I might be able to paint the hull next week, which would be awesome. Now it's only five o'clock, so uh, let's see what's next on the to-do list. Here inside of Athena, there's nothing really keeping me from finishing the galley, which would be pretty cool. You guys already saw the two cabinet doors for the area underneath the sink and the three drawer fronts for this area right next to the sink. I would love to finish the two cabinet or locker doors that's going to go here and over here before I start varnishing anything because it's easier just to do a whole bunch in one fell swoop. So uh, let's fiddle around with this tonight. The astute might have noted that there's not a lot of room here behind the sink, and that does pose a little bit of a challenge if we want to have doors that open out. So Ava and I have decided to put the faucet here next to the sink rather than back here. We don't really love the idea of having the faucet over here, but it seems like it's the best idea we can come up with for not compromising the storage here inside of this locker. Maybe some of you guys have a better idea for what we should do with this faucet, but remember the name of the game here is to not compromise or take up a bunch of the storage back here. And I just don't think there's any way of doing that if the faucet is going to be placed where this water bottle is located right now. But getting back to tonight's to-do list, there's something here that I want to add to it and it's two tiny drawer slides. Last week I built these two drawer boxes here, but I didn't have the correct size drawer slides for the bottom one. And I figured I'd hold off on building the box until I could actually grab some accurate measurements. It's primarily the width of the drawer box I'm interested in because for the in and out action to be nice, that does need to be somewhat precise. This is the width of the two other boxes and that is a little bit too snug. So if I take about a millimeter off of this, it should be perfect. After a quick stop at the stick shortener, this should now be a nice snug fit. I would rather have this be a little too loose than a little too tight, but uh, this looks perfect. So let's head to the workshop. 
all four sides of the box are going to be the same height. So uh, let's make that the first cut. Of the back and the front, I've got my little measuring stick here. And that brings us to the only thing I have a real chance of messing up with this box here, and that is the depth of it. I want to put in some rabbits to make it easier to line everything up. Those are going to be half the thickness of the plywood, so I only need to subtract the width of one piece of plywood from the desired width, which is 32 centimeters. So that brings me to 30.8 centimeters. That is Perfect, now I just need to make those rabbits and this should be the correct size. That was a quick test to figure out the depth of cut and uh, this looks good to me. With the rabbits cut, we are now right slab dab on 32 centimeters. The very last thing I need to make is the bottom in the box and that is gonna be some nine millimeter plywood. I think a quick little test fit is in order before I bust out the thickened epoxy. Everything looks to be in order. I think my next YouTube channel is just gonna be building boxes because it's oddly satisfying to do and, well, there are never really any big surprises. It's the next day, the box is now finished. All it needs is a little bit of sanding and it's ready to get installed. I used a little dab of thickened epoxy to glue the box together because I don't have any wood glue and I have plenty of epoxy. I've already been at it six or seven hours today. I started out by sanding all of the deck hull joint to get rid of a little bit of the waviness I mentioned yesterday. And then I used my big board from Flexi Sander to apply yet more fairing compound to get rid of yet more of the waviness. I'm hopeful that when this last application of fairing compound cures, then I should be able to start rounding over the edge. Tomorrow it's supposed to rain, but that's okay because I think I could do with a little break from all of the sanding and fairing, and this showed up yesterday. This is the insulation for the fridge. We'll get back to what exactly this stuff is tomorrow, but uh, yeah, it would be good to get started building the fridge. I've spent the last couple of hours generating an obscene amount of sawdust. I was able to reuse some of the wood from last week's Cheapomatic 2000 failure, and uh, this is gonna turn into the four little cabinet doors behind the sink. I could have saved myself a lot of trouble if I just had some six millimeter plywood with an out of veneer that matches this stuff, but I don't, so instead I had to make this. This is epoxy with a little bit of sawdust mixed into it. I'm gonna be adding some 4062 to thicken it up. My hopes is that this will match the color of the wood that I'm using for the center of the cabinet doors. The thickened epoxy does look a little bit light in color, but it does tend to get a little bit darker once it cures. So I think this is a good match. They look like a giant mess right now, but after a light sanding tomorrow, they're gonna look just like the other ones. Yesterday, I showed you guys the insulation for the fridge that's gonna live here in the kitchen island. But then last night, I realized that there's something important I need to do before I can actually build the fridge. I need to seal the inside of the kitchen island. As you can see by these little mistakes down here that I'll sand away before I start painting, I've already sealed the underside of this where the diesel tank is located. But yeah, I need to seal all of this up. And for that, I'll be using the exact same combination of Sigma Cover 280 and Sigma Dura 520 that I've used in all of the other hidden spaces inside of the boat. A while back, I showed you guys these little doohickeys here for opening and closing the kitchen island. And having used them for a few weeks, I really like them. Now, these are mild steel, so I am gonna be making some in stainless, and they're also gonna have a few extra features. I want to make these arms here slightly longer so that we'll have a bigger opening so that we'll actually be able to get into the fridge even with the insulation in place. 
I also want to add a locking mechanism so that the countertop locks in place when it's open and when it's closed. And if I can put a rod in between this and the one on the other side, the two should be synchronized, which should get rid of a lot of the wobble. When I say wobble, I mean this bit of unpleasantness here where the countertop kind of comes down at weird angles. But yeah, building the new opening and closing mechanisms is gonna be a great project for a little bit later this summer or maybe in the fall. And one last little note about these doohickeys, they are gonna be located outside of the insulation. So yeah, there's no need to worry about them being inside of the fridge. I've already got some really nice stainless angle iron for this bit up here. So I think this is gonna be a really fun project. I'm gonna steer clear of the inside of the boat for just a little bit to allow the fumes to dissipate. I've recommended this book in the past. It is probably the best book for DIY boat guys and gals. It's got a chapter about onboard refrigeration, including how to build your own insulated box. It covers a whole heap of different topics, including choice of insulation. It even mentions vacuum panels, which is maybe a little bit too advanced for me. It also goes into thickness of the insulation and just a whole bunch of other stuff. If you're gonna be building a fridge aboard your boat, I highly recommend you pick up this book. For insulation, the book recommends using Blueboard, which is a type of XPS foam that is commonly available and dirt cheap in the US. Now here in Denmark, XPS foam is very hard to get your hands on. Which is weird because it is very common in both Sweden and Germany, but here in Denmark, not so much. What I've got here is not XPS. It's a phenolic foam, which at least on paper is a better insulator than XPS. But if I'd been able to get my hands on XPS, especially at the prices that it's available at in the US, well, then I would just have gone with XPS because it's very well proven. When it comes to choosing insulation, the ability to insulate is only one of the parameters. And one of the things that surprised me a little bit about this foam is how easy it is to crush. I believe XPS foam is a little bit more durable than this stuff. That's not the end of the world, but it does mean I have to build something inside of the fridge, something that can protect this stuff from impact damage in case we drop something heavy inside of the fridge. The book mentions a melamine faced masonite, which I'm gonna look into, but also just something as simple as a plywood box that's really well sealed up could be an option, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna mold this over a little bit. Given that today is Friday, I think I'm gonna start building the fridge in next week's video. But now let's get these cabinet doors cleaned up so we can figure out the area behind the sink. All they're gonna need is just a light sanding to get rid of the epoxy. That is one down, three to go, and I think they clean up pretty nice. It looks like the primer is pretty much dried, so let's just temporarily put the countertop back to keep dust out of here. I'm gonna have to make some slight modifications to what I've already roughed out here behind the sink because some of these pieces here need to be just a little bit wider to leave enough room for the trim that's gonna cover the knee where the chain plates attaches. If I add one centimeter here, one centimeter here, and three centimeters back here, that should be perfect. Adding this little bit of extra width should make sure that the doors can actually open for the trim that's gonna cover the knee and also the trim that's gonna be on the bulkhead. The inside of the hull is gonna get covered in insulation, so I don't need to paint that, but I do wanna paint the knee and also this plywood over here. So before I assemble everything, I just wanna make sure that it's all nice and sanded to get rid of any loose paint and also any pokey bits. While I've got unhindered access to the knee, I might as well go ahead and drill the holes for through bolting the chain plate. 
The big white blobs in here, that's thickened epoxy so that if the chain plate ever starts leaking again, there's no way for that water to get in contact with the plywood core inside of the knee. Assembling this is probably going to be easiest to do on the kitchen island. I just want to make some last little modifications. Mr. Angle Grinder is great for putting a bevel on plywood where it doesn't need to be neat, it just needs to fit. There's going to be a headliner up here and that is going to hide the tiny gap that's here. So yeah, I think we're good to go for assembly. So far, so good. Everything should be lined up. All I need to do now is just to trim this piece back here a little bit to allow room for the chain plate. This should be enough and if it's not, I can always just trim it a little bit more once I install the chain plates. A couple of fillets of thickened epoxy should do a good job of securing everything. It's the next day, the thickened epoxy has secured and this is now way stronger than it needs to be. I've got some hinges here that I was thinking about using for the cabinet doors but I don't know how well they're going to work out because there is a lot of play in these but uh, well, the only way to figure that out is just to give it a go. What I'm worried about is this little bit of wobble here because this wobble turns into a lot of wobble by the time we get out here. This is the big moment of truth. Huh? I think this is... I think this is gonna work out. I only have the four hinges. I wanted to test them out before ordering a whole bunch of them. So I can't really install the other cabinet doors. And also it doesn't make sense because they're not varnished yet and I still need to paint all of this. But yeah, this should give you guys an idea of what the galley is going to look like. These are the hinges I've used and uh, I'm about to order 20 more of them. So uh, if you guys wanna buy stock in this company, now would probably be a good time. It would be really cool to see the drawer boxes in action and also maybe temporarily attach the drawer front. So why don't I just go ahead and do that? Of course, I still need some more hinges to be able to permanently attach the doors and something to secure the doors and the drawers. But yeah, so far it's looking pretty dang spiffy if I do say so myself. After a little bit of fiddling about, I've built the two pieces of trim that's going to cover the knee and the forward chain plate. Of course, the thickened epoxy is going to have to cure overnight, so you guys won't see the finished result until next week's video. And uh, speaking of next week's video, it looks like the weather is going to be really, really nice, meaning I can put in a lot of time getting the hull all ready for paint. That would be amazing because next week is my last week of vacation for now. I have another week a little bit later in the summer, but it would be really cool to get the hull all finished. Fortunately, I can only apply one layer of fairing compound per day. So there's also going to be some other stuff in next week's video. For instance, the fridge. And I think I figured out what I want to do for the inside box in the fridge, the one that's going to sit inside of the insulation and protect it. I want to take a little bit of foam core and lay up a few layers of glass and build a composite inside box. 
I've got a little bit of this 10 millimeter foam and uh, with a few layers of glass on each side, this is gonna be insanely strong and more than adequate for the fridge. Also with all of the cabinet doors and the drawer fronts done and with the trim done, I'm very tempted to just slap a quick coat of paint on the galley so that you guys can see what it looks like when it's finished because there's a lot of plywood visible there now and all of that plywood is gonna get painted white. I'm not entirely sure I'll be able to paint the hull next week because there are some other factors that needs to fall into place for that to happen. But at the very least, I can get the hull 100% ready for paint, which would be good. But uh, yeah, as you can hear, there's a lot of cool stuff coming up next week. So I hope to see all of you guys back here in the workshop and aboard Athena. So yeah, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.